Home runs are ruining baseball. Yes, you heard me right. Driven deep to left field. There it goes. See ya. The most exciting play in the sport is actually ruining the game. This might sound like heresy to some, like saying there are too many touchdowns in football. But hear me out. While Aaron Judge, Vlad Guerrero Jr., and Pete Alonso might grab all the headlines, the emphasis on home runs has made the game more predictable. And sorry to say this, a bit boring. So how the hell did that happen? The number 244, that's how. Now obviously, home runs have always been a part of the game. Babe Ruth, Hank Aaron, Willie Mays, many of the legends of the game were also prolific home run hitters. But it wasn't until the mid 90s that Major League Baseball realized they could really profit off of their power hitters. Today we know that most, if not all of those guys were juiced. McGuire, Sosa, Barry Bonds, just to name a few, have all had their reputations tarnished because of steroids. But the league also isn't stupid. They knew exactly how good home runs were for business. In 1994, there was a player striking for the first time ever. There was no World Series that year. When the players came back in 1995, attendance was down 12% across the league. Something had to be done to save the game. Well, the home run era was about to begin. And as long as profits were up, the league was happy to turn a blind eye. From 1996 to 2001, what many call the steroid era, there were at least 12 players who hit 40 home runs in each season. Everyone remembers the 1998 season where Mark McGuire and Sammy Sosa dueled to see who would break Roger Maris's home run record of 61 in a season. But people forget that the very next season, the two of them ran it back and hit 65 and 63 home runs respectively. And the profits were very clear. Home runs equals more money. And in 1995, the league's revenue was $1.4 billion. By 2001, it was $3.7 billion, an annual growth rate of over 16%. But what happened when the league realized that home runs create superstars, but you also banned steroids? To many baseball purists, you get what they consider to be a flawed product in today's game. Any baseball fan will tell you that the sport at its best is like a chess match. Every pitch is calculated, lineups are set up to maximize players on base in order to bring in the most amount of runs with one swing. It's why we call them managers and not coaches. Every piece fits into a larger strategy, but if the game just prioritizes home runs, as a result, the other exciting parts of the game like base stealing, pitching with runners in scoring position, and other high leverage situations become less prioritized. And what you get is actually less offense, less players on base, and save for a few exciting dingers, an arguably more boring product. To prove my point, first, we gotta look at batting averages over the years. For about 25 years, batting averages in baseball were fairly consistent. In 1973, the league batting average was 257, and until the mid 90s, you could bet on the league average being anywhere between 254 up to 267. Batting averages peaked in the steroid era, hitting 271 in 1999. And while the early 2000s had pretty good numbers, since 2010, the league batting average has never been higher than 257. In fact, in 2021, the MLB had its lowest league batting average since 1972. That number, 244. Of course, we can't blame this only on guys trying to smash dingers. The pitching has gotten a lot stronger as well. In 2002, the league average fastball was 88.5 miles an hour. In 2021, it was up to 94.9. But it's also a well-documented fact that home run hitters tend to strike out more. When he swing for power, you tend to have less bat control, which leads to more swings and misses. So what you have today is more guys going for the big swing, pitchers throwing faster than ever, which leads to more strikeouts, and less singles, doubles, and triples. In 2021, MLB games averaged 5.15 singles per game, the second lowest ever. The only year with less? 2020, with 5.04 singles per game. But at least home runs were flying out of the park, right? In 2015, the league introduced a new baseball that many people considered to be juice, and we saw an explosion in home runs. This peaked in 2019 with an average of 1.39 home runs per game. To put this into context, even at the peak of the steroid era, the highest per game home run average came in the year 2000 with an average of 1.17. But in recent years, the league has installed humidifiers in all the parks to attempt to standardize the heat of the balls across the league. The result? Lots and lots of dead balls. Swings that would have knocked the ball into the bleachers just three years ago are now dying in the air and leading to pop flies. So what is the game looking like today? Sure. We have a couple of pure power hitters who ignite the crowd with their towering shots. But in reality, there are more and more innings where the game could basically be played by just the pitcher, the catcher, and the hitter because no one else seems to be doing anything. Strikeouts and walks are way up, contact hits are way down, and less runs are being scored. All the in-game strategy that makes baseball so fun for their biggest fans is disappearing. So let me go back to the beginning. Home runs! 
the most exciting play in the sport is actually ruining baseball. What do you think? Thanks for watching this episode of How the Hell. Do you miss the steroid era just as much as I do? Admit it, it was fun. It was a good time, it was exciting. Let me know in the comments what you think. I'm just gonna go. See you next time.